morning, YouTubers. I've got kind of like a glow today. I don't know why, but I guess it's that sun coming through the fake stained glass. <laughs> we all know about Ron Paul. We know about the Iowa rep. I believe it's Iowa rep that took the stand. I just put this video together real quick. See what you guys think. Have fun. Enjoy the song at the beginning. It was done by Brother Miguel. He's a true Christian warrior. Um, enjoy the song. Listen to the lyrics and you'll understand what it's about. Have a good day. Peace. All the mainstream is so truthless, but it's real Christ. Ripping people tell the truth. This can join the Freemason Lodge and they'll show you what they see. Sell your soul for false security. This is Lucifer's top deception. All these cult symbols are the worship of erections. All this evil mind control comes from the mother church that messed with the research. Call it Jesuit and I'm calling it. Now they're gonna have a fit. My purpose is to seek the real Jesus. To call out the wolf preacher. Cause we live in History on the road in this land of lost souls under demon control. People looking left right blind to the robbing of the souls. Demons in the shadows trying to teach you Jesus ain't got no true divinity. They're just trying to corrupt me and turn into the land of deceit. Home of the slaves, sell your Christ, repping people break away from the chains. They're using to control your mind. We can stop them. I sure ain't gonna let them get mine. So let's pop them in the heat of this crime. We can see God's design as he exposes all. Amen. Total power in one person's hands, not the American way. These damn bills have come out here all the damn time. Come out here in the last second, and I gotta try to figure out how to vote for my people. How ashamed of are you? Suckers? You should be ashamed of yourselves. I'm sick of it. Every year we give power to one person.
It was not made that way in the Constitution. He was around when it was written. Now we give it, we pass rules that stop each one of us. Enough! I feel like somebody trying to be released from Egypt. Let my people go! My God, they sent me here to vote for them! They sent me here to vote, vote for them, to argue for them! But I'm trapped. I'm trapped by rules that have been forced down our throats. Folks, we live in a democracy, but not here, but not here. So you go back and you tell your people, I'd like to do that, but the speaker has so much power, so much control, and each one of us do it in their districts and have to go back and say that. And you can say on your side of the aisle, oh, no, no, that's not the case. But yes, you do. All of us know you got to deal with it. When's it going to stop? The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Paul, for five minutes. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last week I introduced legislation, H.R. 5993, that would prohibit the president from providing military or paramilitary aid of any sort to any faction in the internal fighting in Syria. Unfortunately, it appears that the administration is already very much involved in supporting the overthrow of the Assad government. There's an area of whimper of criticism in Congress over our growing involvement in the civil war in Syria. The only noise we hear from Congress and repeated in the media is the complaint that we're not doing enough and that immediate direct U.S. military action must be taken. Tragically, our political leaders show both bad judgment and short memories when it comes to the downside of our foreign policy of mischief and intervention. Our compulsion to engage ourselves in every conflict around the world is dangerous to our national security. In dealing with Syria, the administration pretends to pursue diplomacy and provide humanitarian assistance to the people. In reality, the U.S. government facilitates weapons transfers to the rebels who are demanding immediate regime change. My goal is to stop our dangerous participation in the violence in Syria, yet evidence mounts that we're already deeply involved with no expectation that the administration will back away from military engagement. Recent reports indicate that the U.S. is providing logistics and communication assistance to the rebel forces. Assistance in getting arms to the rebels through surrogates is hardly a secret. Cooperating with the rebels' propaganda efforts has been reported and is used to prepare the American people for our coming involvement. There's every reason to expect that the well-laid plans to once again coordinate a favorable regime change will end badly. Even the strongest supporters of our direct and immediate military involvement in Syria admit the rebel forces are made up of many groups, including al-Qaeda, and no one is sure to whom the assistance should be given. All they claim is the need for the immediate removal of Assad. This policy is nothing new, and too often in our recent history, our assistance with dollars and weapons used to overthrow a government ends up with the weapons being used instead against us. The blowback from our policy of intervention has caused a great deal of harm to us since World War II. Propping up the Shah in Iran for 26 years was a powerful factor in motivating radical Islamists to eventually overthrow the Shah in 1979. The hostages taken at the U.S. Embassy at that time was a consequence of our putting the Shah into power in 1953. Working with the Mujahideen in the 1980s, our CIA supported radical Islam in an effort to combat communist occupation in Afghanistan. Later, this led to the radical Islamist hatreds being turned against us over our occupation and interference in Muslim countries. The $40 billion given to Egypt for over 30 years to prop up the Musharraf dictatorship and buy an unstable peace with Israel has ended with what appears to be the takeover of Egypt by the Muslim Brotherhood. They may well turn Egypt into a theocratic Islamic state unless our CIA is able to once again gain control. Al-Qaeda now has a presence in parts of Egypt and has been involved in the bombing of pipelines carrying gas to Israel. This is hardly a policy that is enhancing Israel's security. 
What are the possible unintended consequences of this policy if we foolishly escalate the civil war in Syria? The worst scenario would be an all-out war in a region involving Russia, the United States, Israel, Iran, Turkey, and others. The escalating conflict could rapidly make containment virtually impossible. Chaos in this region could encourage the Kurds in Syria, Iraq, Turkey, and Iran to decide it's an opportunity to move on their long sought after goal of establishing a Kurdish state. Significant hostilities in the region would jeopardize the free flow of oil from the Middle East, causing sharp increases in the price of oil. The already weak economy of the West would suffer immensely. Some will argue erroneously that a major war would be beneficial to the economy and distract from the peoples from their economic woes. War, however, is never an economic benefit, although many have been taught that for many decades. If liberty and prosperity are to be our goals, peace is a necessary ingredient of that process. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Miller, for five minutes. U.S. President Barack Obama is pushing Russian President Vladimir Putin to break with his Syrian ally Bashar al-Assad. But just as Obama is putting pressure on Putin, he's also feeling the pressure here at home. The loudest critic is his former rival, Senator John McCain. When it comes to the administration's policy towards Syria, to say they are leading from behind is too generous. That suggests they are leading. They're just behind. With me now is U.S. presidential candidate Ron Paul, who disagrees with Senator McCain. Unsurprising, Ron Paul is very consistent in his views about military intervention. He says what's happening in Syria is, quote, none of our business. Congressman Paul, good to see you again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Uh, no surprise that you disagree with John McCain. You might actually find yourself more allied with this uh, administration, who really has chosen, uh, though they've spoken of intervention, not to actually do anything. Yeah, but they've already intervened too much. They've already assisted the, uh, the rebels, the uh, groups that are opposing the government. They, he certainly got us involved in Libya rather uh, drastically. So I would say, unfortunately, if you just look at the uh, conventional wisdom of the media and the government, our government, is that there are two groups in this country. One wants to go to war, sort of, and the other one wants to really go to war. But there's many of us who think that it's very unwise, bad politics, right. bad foreign policy, a danger to us, and we don't have the money to do it. Could be bad politics, could be bad foreign policy, could be dangerous, and we may not have the money, but you are a physician. Uh, do you see these pictures and wonder at some point whether the world needs to get involved? I, I look at those pictures and I think it's tragic because too many people are involved. So uh, when you drum up stories like in Libya and say that there's been uh, annihilation of a, of a lot of people and there was going to be a massacre, which didn't happen, as an excuse to go in and uh, take over a country like Libya and actually allow the Al-Qaeda to come in, uh, yes, I do, but I think that uh, when we use, if we uh, continue to do what we do with drone missiles, I look at those children that get killed and all the collateral damage, and as a physician, and as a person concerned about my country, and, uh, and working for peace, yeah, I look at that and I think it's tragic. I see it all coming from us doing way too much, getting involved and getting ourselves into trouble rather than acting more peacefully like our founders t wanted us to, to uh, offer peace and trade so and negotiations. Let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this. You have often said you, you are remarkably consistent in your views of, of not intervening militarily unless uh, national security, U.S. national security is at stake. And that is a case right. that Senator McCain has made that uh, Syria, uh, not a proxy, but an ally of Iran and that doing something in Syria would be a big blow to Iran. Give me your view on that. Well, I think it, that's stretching it. That may be true, but, you know, we have allies around the world. We're in 130 countries, 900 bases. Uh, the, the Iran, Iran is surrounded by 45 of our bases. They're no threat to anybody. That's all a concocted scheme to take over their oil. And uh, they have to get, you know, they have to take over Syria in order to go on to Iran. So this is just the plan of those who love intervention and love our empire. 
and, uh, and the American people have fallen for this before, and I'm just trying to wake up the American people and say, don't fall for these lies again. Iraq, it's in shambles right now. The Christians have been running off, and, and look at what's happening over there, and Al-Qaeda's in there. Al-Qaeda from Iraq is going into Syria. We're supposed to be opposing uh, the Al-Qaeda, not encouraging right. them by just stimulating their growth and giving them the motivation to do what they've been doing to us. Congressman Paul, pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank well, now you. I want to turn to somebody with an entirely different point of view. Who says Washington must do more. Fuad Ajami is the author of Syrian Rebellion and a senior fellow at Stanford University's Hoover Institute. I sat down with him earlier. Fuad, Ron Paul says this is not uh, in America's interest. It's not America's business. Why is it? Well, I'll tell you what, Ron Paul has the clarity of his convictions. I mean, he believes that the world beyond our shores is none of our business. But the troubling thing is not Ron Paul because he's not the commander in chief. The troubling thing is Barack Obama because he actually believes the same thing that Ron Paul says, but he won't proclaim it because Syria has bled now and suffered for 15 months and President Obama has not really paid it much attention. So that's the real dilemma there. Is your call for